What's up, YouTube? I am the Cairo. Thank you once again for tuning in. Back with another video by request. Subscriber Mr. Fix It has asked for me to create a video of me working on the MK3 creating scenes and patterns within the software. So I'm going to show you my face right quick. What's up, y'all? And then I'm going to jump to the screen so you guys can see what I'm doing. But in this video, I'll be using the scene and pattern buttons in, uh, on the hardware so you guys could uh, get an idea of what I'm doing as you see the screen moving. All right, let's go. The Cairo did this. All right, y'all, so let's hop right into it. So got a quick one bar pattern. Um, the reason that I started out with one bar is because I wasn't sure of what I was gonna do with the sample here, which is this right here, the whispers. Wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. And so I just wanted to do one bar to kind of get like a basic idea of the drums and see what I wanted to do. And then I take it from there. So I'm kind of weird sometimes when I when I make my beats. Sometimes I'll start off with the drums. Sometimes I'll start off with the sample. Sometimes I'll start off with one bar, two bar, four bars. If I want to play something, I'll start off with eight bars or more. So it all depends. But in this one, it was just kind of weird. Um, I wasn't lazy. I just wanted one bar to just get the idea of what was going on. So let's play it and uh, so you guys can check it out. And like I told y'all before in my last video about my sample process, I like to kind of let the sample play on. So when I hit stop or when the song stops, it kind of still plays out just to kind of tag it out. Um, so, yeah, so that's it on that. So what we're going to do is extend this. And I'm trying to keep from touching the hardware too much so you guys can kind of follow along on the screen here. But so what we want to do is take this uh, this one, the scene one and append it to the arrangement. And then we're going to go over here and as you can see it's now there and now what i want to do is extend it out so what i'm going to do from the hardware is hit pattern and then i want to double and so it takes it to two bars and that's just for the uh, the the uh pattern that has the drums and the main sample so as you can see though when i hit play the bass line will still play out because it's just going to be looping within one bar but this is going to play out it's two so you can see so this is at two bars and this is looping at one all right and then let me stop it real quick and another thing I, I do is um sometimes I nudge my snares as you can see I got two snares here I got this one and then I got uh this one here and this one is kind of nudged over and this one's off and then I, I kind of try to do these things to kind of make it sound human and kind of make it sound I don't know, just kind of crazy sometimes when it hits, but it gives you that cool effect when they're going through. Uh, but, I, but I do want to go here, and I'm going to double this one. So we're going to hit pattern. We're going to hit double, and then that's going to double it out to, uh, to the two bars. And again, what you'll see when you hit pattern on the hardware, you're going to get remove, double, or duplicate. If you duplicate, what it's going to do is just create a, a duplicate of that pattern, whichever pattern you're using. And let me show you what I mean by that. So you'll go into your groups of B and then you'll see another uh, pattern here. And then you could just select either one. But because these are the same, meaning there's no change ups, uh, they're going to remain the same. But it'll create it as pattern two. So if you notice, if you look here. When I'm typing back, I mean, toggling back and forth is going to give me pattern one, pattern two, which is something you can also do on the pads. But again, um, because I'm on the screen, I'm trying to show you on the screen. But through the hardware, what you're going to do is you'll hit pattern and then you'll see uh, the first two pads will be highlighted. So pattern one is going to go there. And then if I hit pattern two, it's going to switch it to pattern two. And that's what I'm doing on the hardware right now. So just wanted to show you guys that just to kind of, like I said, keep uh, the scene, I'm mean, sorry, the pattern idea um, and how I use it. Uh, again, a lot of stuff that I do is just based on how I do things. I'm sure there's faster ways and I'm sure there's more efficient ways to do stuff. But because you guys know that I'm learning this MK3 and the, and, um, the machine of software as well, um, you know, I got to get used to a lot of the stuff, man, because I'm used to the NPC. So like I said, I kind of want to walk you guys through. And if I look slow doing stuff, it's just because I got to 
remain in the mind state of working on the machine of software, especially because when I sometimes when I hit pads, you know, it's like I'm still on the NPC at times. So that's that part. And then let's hop over and let's start creating scenes. All right. So on to the scenes. So two ways we can do scenes. Either we can hit this plus sign right here or we can do it from the hardware by hitting the scene button and then going over to pad two and then creating a new scene. But like I said, since we're on the screen, let me go ahead and create a scene here. And then that's going to give me another scene. Now I like to jump back to the hardware to create the scene part. And what I'll do is hit scene. And then I'm going to hit scene and it's going to give me position number two because I'm in scene number two. And then there's a, a column that says scene. And so what I'm doing is turning the knob and I want to duplicate scene one because I don't have anything on scene two yet. So my only selection would be scene uh, one. But if I have multiple scenes, I'll be able to go one, two, three, four, whichever scene it was if I wanted to duplicate that scene. So now what I want to do uh, because here's the thing about Machina that I had to learn and it gave me a headache because I couldn't figure it out for the longest because again I was in an NPC state of mind is that if I make changes here in this scene because it says scene one it's going to affect the first scene that I have which is something that I never understood as far as song mode went and stuff like that within the NPC you could kind of create new sequences etc but when you go into song mode you can say you want a certain scene to play a few times this that and the other so it's the same concept but for some reason i just didn't understand it until i got fully familiar with the machine and software and i was like dang it's the same but i was just tripping i was just being stubborn and trying to find a reason not to like it all right so before we make any changes to the names of these scenes or any pattern edits here because i want to do something different in this one than i do in this one i have to make both of these unique in their own way. So what did you do? You can right click and hit unique or from the software you can hit scene and then you're going to get the option to uh, make a unique auto length duplicate all of that stuff. But like I said for the sake of this we just want to make it unique. Okay so now with a unique scene what happens is any changes that I do here won't affect this screen here or this sorry this scene here. So same thing here is going to be if I want to make changes in here, like if I want to do drops or, you know, any kind of fluctuations that I don't want to happen here, it's just it's going to work better because I have a new scene set up here. So we can name it. Uh, let's name this one Chorus. And then we're going to name this one. Let's name it Verse. And like I said, I don't want it long. So I'm just and that's just for the sake of this uh, video here. So we'll still keep everything at two bars. But what I'm going to do is make changes on this one so you can see what's up. And the reason that pattern three is showing here is because remember when I hit the pads, I made uh, two uh, certain patterns for this one. And so because I made this scene here unique, it's going to automatically make a third one. So let's look at it so you guys can see. And that's and that's what we have there. So like I said, if I hit um pattern on the pad and then select one two and three it's going to change it so i'm hitting hitting it one hitting it two hitting it three and then that's that's what affects that but again i'm not going to change the baseline so pattern one is actually going to be suitable all right so let's get started with the edits of the scenes and the patterns all right so the first scene we changed it to chorus second scene we changed it to verse so i want to have something different on this one as opposed to this one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the first pattern part and this is going to be pattern two now, which is not going to affect pattern one over here, which like I said, due to my stubbornness, I hated this part, but now I understand why, it, why it's dope. Um, so, so let's drop, let's drop something drastic. So let's see what we got here. All right, so let's do this. Let's drop the snare there. So we got two snares. So of course I gotta, I gotta drop that one. And you could right click on your mouse, it's gonna take it away. And I think that that's what one of the issues was as far as copying and pasting because on uh, other softwares you can right click and it's gonna give you the op options to copy and paste. And this software it actually deletes uh, whatever whatever you highlight over and right click on. So that's one thing. So let's start it and let's see the drop there.
So something simple, but like I said, we go back here, everything's still there. Going back there, it's gone. So so that's a good part about that. And then, like I said, with the baseline, oh, why not? Let's show it. So let's drop the baseline there. We're gonna right click, and then let's drop it here. Just something drastic so we could get the effect. All right, so let's start that over. And so let's say if we wanted to create another pattern. Now here's the dope part. So now when I hit, I'm sorry, not another pattern, another scene. So now when I hit scene, I have the option to select between chorus and verse. And I'm on the hardware now and I'm toggling uh, up and down. You got none, you got chorus, you got verse. And again, this is what you're going to see on the screen. Now we're on section three or position three. And then it's going to be seen and I named it verse because I want to do, a let's say, another layout on the verse, right? So now what I want to do is I got to make this unique again. So I'm going to show you on the screen. But like I said, on the hardware, you just hit scene and hit unique. And then it's going to give you another unique. And you see how I made pattern number four because we have three patterns of this. So it automatically has to make another one. But these are in order up here, one, two, three. And of course, this is only because of the fact of when I showed you earlier on how to create the uh, the new patterns, all right? Another cool thing that you can do is drag and drop scenes into a new position. So let's say we don't want scene three at the end anymore. We can highlight it, drag it in between the chorus and the verse, and there you have it. And so let's play it out uh, and let's see how it works. And of course, so it's like it's on. So let's let's do something real drastic. Let's say no baseline. Okay, and let's start it up. And then let's highlight this one and let's see if it affected this one at all. As you can see, it doesn't. You can see the markers there. Same thing with the chorus. Everything's there because we didn't make any changes on that one. One other thing that I want to point out before we end the video is understanding the way that the loop works. And that's loop right there. It's really important that you that you understand that all of this has to be highlighted. Otherwise, it's only going to pay, play the section that's highlighted, which is annoying if you're trying to play out your whole song and you don't understand how this works. So let me show you real quick. And notice that it keeps looping back with this verse scene. But what if I want to play everything from start to finish? All you have to do is go to scene one. This, this is the way that I do it. So others may do it a different way, but this is the way I go about doing it. I'll double click and you see everything is highlighted now. So then when we hit play, everything is going to play all the way through. then it's gonna loop back around. And lastly, what I like to do is just walk you through the process of exporting out this track for upload into another DAW or just regular playback. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go under file, we're gonna go export arrangement as audio, and as you can see here, I'm already in master output. Master output is just gonna give me a regular uh, audio file just for playback. But let's say you want to export all the sound outputs and you have the groups, which is here. And this is normally you will use this for uploading to another DAW because you want everything to track out. And then uh, the other option is group outputs. And that's just going to give you the group, but it's going to be, everything's going to be together. So it's not going to be I ideal for uploading to a DAW because let's say everything on, on this drum and, and sample track Everything is going to be together. And so what if I want to make adjustments to the sample or make adjustments to, let's say, the drums that I have for separation to maybe put effects uh, on the bass or put an effect on the hi-hats or put an effect on the snare. I won't be able to do that without affecting everything. So this is kind of like a collective um, export. 
And same thing is going to do with the baseline, which the baseline doesn't matter why, because I only got one thing on that on that group. Um, but that's that, those are the options there. And then also you have other options here on what type of file you want it. So it's going to be a wave or AIFF for Mac. Of course, you have this option, but I normally just stick to wave and then your sample rates. And don't really um, I really don't mess with those too much. I know that some people like to go at uh, for uh, I think it's 48. 48,000. I try to stick away from that because that's a high sample rate. Yeah, it's cool. But again, I try to stick within the 44 one. And then of course, then you got 16, 24 and 32 bit float. Uh, and so again, th these are some things that uh, other bit individuals may want to change, but play around with it. See what works best for you. But like I said, I try to stick to what I have here. So it hasn't changed much. And then you would just hit export and then it would, um, it would just export it out and let's just do it for the sake of the tutorial. So before exporting, you want to make sure that your outputs are correct. So for this one, since we're just doing a basic output for a stereo two track, we're going to hit master output. Also, you have to make sure that it's going to the correct uh, folder of your choice. So to change the folder, all you have to do is double click and it's going to bring up your options. I'm going to let this one go to desktop so it'll be easiest to find. And then we're just going to hit export. And then it's done. And the reason that this one went so fast is one, because I don't have a lot of uh, tracks open um, within the machine of software. And also because of the fact that we're just doing the master output. So we can close that out. We can minus this down. And then you'll see the WAV file there. And let's just hit play to see what it does. So that's pretty much it. And as always, thank y'all for tuning in. I am the Cairo. Plug in, get connected. We are TMR. Gotta go. Wifey's calling. The Cairo did this.